a safe day so far. Today on the show, I have the pleasure to interview Kathy Noel. Uh, I know Kathy through a, um, a, a guru program that I'm taking and we are both following the same teacher. And uh, I have the pleasure of um, getting to know her bit by bit. We set up this appointment a long time ago, not knowing that we were gonna go through um, something like this today. And I'm so glad that the topic um, that we chose back then could be um, spoken about today because I think that everybody can use it, me included, and I'm so happy that um, Kathy, you've accepted to be here. So thank you for being here and hello and welcome. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> happy there. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Actually, it's it's really nice to, to be interviewed the day of my birthday. And last year, I got interviewed by James McNeil on my birthday too as well. But I was in India this time. So it was quite interesting uh, to see all the, all the things I've been doing in one year. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> About that. So you live um, full time in India? Uh, yes, last year I actually got invited to speak at a conference at the Women Economic Forum in India, in Delhi. And I basically went there for one week with one week of luggage and uh, I just didn't take my flight back. And I spent um, 11 months in India. I was supposed to come here to take a vacation to see my family and stuff. With the whole situation happening, I cannot go back. So I'm actually... Uh, living um, without all my stuff and everything. So my life is now in India and I'm I'm stuck in Canada. Well, stuck. We're, we're really well it's a, here. It's a pretty good place to be stuck <laughs> in, right? <laughs> That's actually the best place to be stuck in. And uh, yes, so my life is uh, in between three, con three cities right now. <laughs> uh, why? Okay, so like I'm so, this is so out of my comfort zone. Why would a person how would a person uh decide to um, travel to a, a a country and then all of a sudden stay there <laughs> how did you make this decision i'm so interested what happened is that um i used to be a teacher and uh i created some uh, uh program for the, the school board and i created a program for an adult center for literacy and computer and that program totally changed the lives of people over there. And uh, but after after one year into that program, the government decided to cut the financial aid for that program and for my students. So I realized that the most thing I was doing is basically coaching. So instead of helping and I lost both my job because of the, the budget being cut. So I lost my job as a pedagogical consultant and as a teacher. And uh, and they say I was not allowed to 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 teach the program that I built outside of the school board or in another school board because it was their intellectual property. So mm -hmm. so I decided to go by myself and I said instead of helping twenty students a year, I can help hundred thousand of people if I do it online, if I do at live events and stuff like that. So I dive right into that kind of stuff. I became a speaker. Um, I wrote uh, a co-author a book called Inspiration for Women by Women. And I started to speak on different stage. I even organized some conferences. So I went really dive deep into that stuff. So when I got invited uh, at the Women Economic Forum, uh, I was really impressed by the cost of living in India. And my situation is, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that are in that situation. I'm trying to sell my service to, to help people, to reach as many people as possible. And the only way to do it is by marketing, doing a lot of marketing and being seen, doing a lot of social media, being behind a computer and putting a lot of content online and all that. I love helping people. I love giving content. I love doing videos and stuff. But don't ask me to sit behind my computer and be a techie person, filling up like funnels and, and doing all that kind of stuff. I hate it. 
<laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> and I wanted to hire people to do that for me, but I'm not earning enough money to hire people. And by not hiring people, I cannot earn enough money. So I was always going in that spiral and spiral, and I was going nowhere. When I reached India and I saw how cheap it was to live over there, I was like, here we go. I can hire people here. So I decided to get really specialized into uh, doing online marketing, social media management for people just like me. So author, speaker, coach, consultant. So I start to, to I, I decided to stay there. I said, you know what, like, I'm going to set up that team. I'm going to finish that cycle that never finished. You know, like I'm going to break that cycle and that down spiral in which I am into. And I, I hire a team over there. And I started selling products uh, like service to author, speaker, and coach that are in Canada and US. And I, I'm providing work for uh, Indians. And on top of that, I took under, under my wings some women that were not really good with computers, were in, in, in difficult situation because they were singles and didn't have a career and uh they needed to like to to take care of themselves and they were depending on other people their parents or there's some ladies that were depending on their husband so i hired them and i give them the tools to earn a living with my online marketing agency so that's why i decided to stay in india to create that to build that and uh, to help myself and help like all the author, speaker, and coach that I know that are stuck in the same situation as me. So that's that's the reason why I decided to stay in India. But trust me, it wasn't easy. <laughs> I bet. Because to me, that takes a lot of courage. Um, and, and this is, I think this is part of the reason why you've learned resilience and determination right because you've had to live through that yourself and that's how come you can teach other people that yes it was not the first time i was starting over life so that's why it wasn't scary for me um i i restart a new life uh i lost pretty much everything because in between when when i i, I decided to become a coach and i started my coaching business i had another business with uh, my life partner and um i create i i like i was doing um starting a business classes in the evening while working as a teacher and when i lost my job as a teacher and pedagogical consultant i opened a business with that guy so it was uh, uh all related to dance so it was um, a dance uh, website and we're organizing uh, international dance competition and stuff like that. Everything was perfect. Like that guy had all the all the things he was good at was the thing I was not good at, and all the thing I was good at it was the thing he was not good at. So we're the best partner for that business, and we were living the dream. Like I was, my time with him was amazing. Uh, we were uh, we were planning to move in together uh we were trying to have a kid together so everything was going well where business were going up we're featuring the newspaper and all that we had like the biggest dance international competition everything was going and and uh, my partner was supposed to go back to france to sign up his divorce paper and come back and then we're starting a new life before leaving he forgot his computer open and I I got the surprise of my life. That guy was actually going back, trying to get back with his ex-wife. After two years, we were together and he, uh, he was cheating on me with another girl in the same city as me. And on top of that, when he was going to France, he planned to have a different girl every night. And not only that, I saw some conversation with him and his friends saying that uh, it was a shame to be with me because I was not good looking enough for him. And he was only with me so I can build his business. So when I confront that guy, uh, he actually emptied our common account and he ran away with our business 
they want to register his business. Wow. I lost my income. I lost my business. I lost my boyfriend. I lost my place because we're supposed to move in together. So I give my notice of leaving. So I have no place to live. And if I wanted to go back as a teacher, there was only one month left of school. So I, I got into that situation where my whole life collapsed in every single area of my life because I couldn't go back with my friends because it was a shame of what was going on because I learned that a lot of people were aware of that. So I was so ashamed I couldn't go see my friends. I couldn't think anything about dance because it was hurting me too much. I have no more income. I, I, I had to, uh, I, like I have people knocking my door for money, for my car, for my cell phone payment, for everything. And it, it was, it was really hard. It was absolutely hard. And, um, so I learned to rebuild myself after that. I learned how to, uh, get the courage and got the resilience to go through that and rebuild myself and find a new way of living. So it was, it was quite, uh, it was two hit one after one. Like I, I lost both my job, my career that was really well going well. And then one year after I lost everything. I lost my business. I lost my boyfriend. I lost my life. So it was, it was really a hard time for me, but, um, it is, it is through a whole bunch of tools and activities that I've been doing that I, I, I was able to hold on and get back on my feet. So Kathy, when, when you were going through such a rough time and as you're explaining your story to me, my heart is like sinking um, <laughs> because I'm, I'm feeling um, that, you know, when a person is hit with so many different challenges at one time and at such a young age, how do you get out of that? And um, so my question to you is, so first of all, how bad were you, how bad was your mental state at that, at that point? Um, and um, how did you get out of it? Like, did you have help? Did you seek out for help? Um, did you know what was going on? Did you, did you see the reality in uh, your mental state? Yes, yes, definitely. Like my, my mental state was really in a dangerous zone, like really dangerous. I, I had suicidal thoughts. I, I'm not going to hide it. It was part of my reality. And, and that's why I think it is important to talk about this right now, because I think a lot of families right now are experiencing what I've been experiencing back then. Like a lot of people right now are losing their, their, their job. Their like, their a whole bunch of stuff is happening. So uh first first thing that i did is that obviously i went to see a psychologue and um by the way if you want to be seen fast by a psychologue you have to say you have suicidal thoughts and then you go in front of everyone so, <laughs> so if, even if you don't you say yeah. you do and they'll see you <laughs> yes don't use it for nothing but mm -hmm. um yeah, so I, I went to see a psychologue and and the psychologue was like, why are you coming to see me? Because obviously you, you've you been through a lot and you know what you're doing and what you're doing is exactly what I'm going to tell you to do. So I'm, I'm in new, no use for you. I was like, okay, thank you. Well, <laughs> um, thank you anyway. So I'm going to keep going on my side. And it is true. The psychologue didn't do anything for me. So what really helped me is to get back into uh, physical activity, like starting to run. And the, what was pushing me to start to run is that um, I'm also a certified fitness trainer. And I promised to one of my friends that will help him to train for one of those uh, obstacle race, you know, it was called prison break. So I promised to him that I would train him for that. And because I didn't care about myself anymore. The only thing, the only reason why I was still alive was not to hurt my family and my friends. So that's that's what was keeping me alive, right? So when I started helping that guy, that's when I felt like I matter again. That's when I felt like I have my place here still, you know? And by starting to work out for him, 
I start to feel alive again. I totally remember, like, I, I, when I was deep into my depression, I couldn't even feed myself. I could not even take a shower. Like, I was starting a shower and I was suffocating in the shower and I have to stop the shower. So it was that bad. And even think that they will have to bring me to the hospital. That's how bad it was. So I remember, like, I, I, I couldn't even get out of my house because the meds they're giving you are giving you even more suicidal th uh, thoughts. Is like really bad. Like I, I really do not recommend to take any of those antidepressive pills. Like it was a nightmare for me. And when I started running, after like the like I, I felt numb. I like when you're in depression, you feel numb. You know what you love, but you don't love it anymore. You know what food you like, but you don't enjoy it anymore. Okay. There is nothing that matters anymore. But when I start running, and I hate running, but at that point, nothing matters to me. Even if I hate doing something, I was totally numb. So hate or love had no difference for me. But when I start running, after a while, I felt like my soul was coming back in my body. I feel like I started to feel again. I started to want something again. I started to have some emotion and feeling about stuff that I didn't for the depression time. And when I realized that, I was like, oh, I'm feeling again, alive again. I'm feeling alive again. And then I started running and running more because I said, oh, it makes me feel good. And it did. And, and after starting to run, then I was journaling. So I was writing down my thoughts, how I was feeling. So I can vent about what was going on. And as soon as you start venting, you realize that you have a lot of pain inside of you and you cannot keep pushing that down because depression is basically is depressing everything that you've been pressing down. When you start to be depressed is because there's too much has been squeezed inside of you that absolutely needs to come out. And the only way to come out is by going through you. So you need to vent, you need to let go all those energy, all those negative thoughts. You need to vent and you need to heal yourself. So I also went to see uh, a hypnotherapist and that lady really helped me to go deep inside of me and go heal my inner child. And that really helped me also. A lot more than a psychologue, to be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, for sure. It it takes um it takes a few different tools. Yeah. Uh, and not everything will work for everybody, and not right. And, and what would work time. for me may not work for you. But you're right. Um, to it's a combination of things. It's the physical activity. It's the talking. It's the journaling. It's um right. It's going deep and healing those wounds from the past. Yeah. Wow. Okay, go, also, keep going. It's also taking care of your environment. So I cut off all the friends that were negative in my life that didn't serve me, that didn't make me feel good. It hurts. There were some friends that I had in my surrounding that were my friends for 15, 20 years. And I was like, you know what? Every time I see that person, I feel down. That person is draining energy out of me. So I cut off all those people away from me. It was a survival at that time, but I realized today that even if you're not in survival mode, you need to do that. Oh my it's God, like, that's one of the hardest things to do, right, um, Kathy? To to oh um, say goodbye to to people. Uh, so how do you how do you justify that? How do you allow yourself um, to uh, say goodbye to someone that you know potentially is hurting you, but at the same time you have that that fear of judgment? Um, how do you do that? It's not easy. It's different for each person that I did. Uh, some of them, you're just never available for them. And eventually, they stop talking to you. Uh, others, you just go straight ahead and says, you know what? I'm not feeling so good right now. I'm really not going well. I'm feeling depressed and all that. And and when I'm around you, is not uplifting me. I feel like it's, it's, it's even getting worse because 
you're dealing sometimes it's because they're dealing with some issue themselves right so I'm, I'm just telling them like i think you have some issue to deal with yourself and i do too and when i'm with you i feel heavier and i think it's better for both of us to heal our our own way or make our own path to to be good and right now i'm trying to help myself and i'm gonna have to be away from you for a while so i can take care of myself properly and then sometimes it's a wake-up call for those people too as well they realize that oh that person is telling me that i'm i'm not being friendly i'm not helping that person so there is there is some people that came back to me and said you were right you know what like i i was i was not helping you <laughs> I, yeah and it's like i'm sorry like i didn't want to hurt you i didn't want to make you feel this way and all that and sometimes it comes from your parents and i had to to tell for example my mom it's like you know mom i know in my age i'm supposed to have a house i have kids and be married and 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 having a, a serious career but this is not my reality this is not my definition of success and every time you're talking to me you're making me feel bad about myself you're making me feel like i'm a loser and i'm i'm not successful and stuff like that and my mom started crying she was like but this is not what i'm telling to other people i'm so proud of you like you did this you did that like you're amazing and all so but this is not what you're telling me and then wow. you just have hit in her face she was like i didn't realize it so what i'm hearing is that um honest communication right and a lot of us um are challenged with honestly communicating our thoughts and feelings to the people around us again um i'm talking from experience is like i'm i was so afraid to hurt that other person that it felt it felt like it was better if, for me to keep it all inside but look at with honestly communicating what you really really feel genuinely telling the people this is how i feel this is how you make me feel and it allows that open communication to happen and look at you know what you accomplished with your with your mom that's yeah, awesome exactly and like mm -hmm. the way she's talking to me right now is totally different mm -hmm. now i feel like she understand me mm -hmm. and now i feel more like sharing about my life to her yeah. yes because you you're not feeling you're being judged, you. you that's, there we go. Yeah. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. And and I I've, I've noticed too. Um. And so we don't end up always keeping the same people around us. We. It, it's like as as um as you change, uh, the people around you change also. Like they they either leave you, uh, <laughs> so they're not <laughs> no longer in your life, or they change. Uh, in accordance uh, to you changing. Yeah. Do you notice that? Yes, that's so true. There are some people that evolve with you going the, the same direction and, and some people take totally another direction and it is okay. It is okay. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And my point of view, if you love someone, is you're also willing to let that person be free. Sometimes we we hold ourselves to someone we love, but that person is not meant to stay in our life anymore. And by holding that person back, you're like out of love because you love that person. You're holding that person back from being able to be happy and living their life. So if you really love someone, you should be able to let that person be also. Yes. And and that's so that they it. could live their own experience their own life experience yeah you're so right yes perfect and there's and sometimes i'm thinking about um one of my ex-boyfriend his family he was really a nice guy but his family was not really good and he was being dragged down by his family all the time and it says i don't want to abandon them it's my family i want to help them and i was like if you're staying in this environment you're never going to be able to help them because they're holding you back you have to let them go so you can grow and help them from higher above and pull their hand back now you're staying with them so you're at the same level than them so you cannot do anything good or better than where you are and who you are so you have to cut the link with them so you can actually get higher and then 
pull them up. If you still I like up. that. So this reminds me of an analogy that I heard um, from um, a gentleman. His um, his name is Michael, and he was my supervisor while I was um, working um, as a volunteer at CMHA. And so he was talking about helping loved ones who are going through mental illness. And he, he explained it like this. Imagine that you have a ladder and your loved one who is, you know, living with challenges is um, going up first and you're right behind them and trying to push them and support them. And so you're right underneath them. And sometimes what happens is that your loved one can't do it anymore. And so they fall down, they let go. And so what's the first thing that happens is you fall down first and they fall right on top of you. So he said, instead, put up a ladder right beside their ladder so that you can both climb to get together, but on separate ladders. And that way, if they happen to fall down, you can always pull them back up. Oh, so that, yeah, right. That's that's kind of what you just said. And that I really appreciate that. Thank you. <sighs> that's awesome. You're full of wisdom, Kathy. <laughs> okay, so 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 keep going. This is a wonderful story. So then, what happened after which story? <laughs> so after so so once once you went through all those challenges and and um, your relationship ended and uh, so what did you do? How did how did you come out of that situation? Well, uh, that's that's what I said. So I went and. Um, I'm I'm like I'm the generation above the YOLO generation. You know, the generation you live only once. And um this is the way I think things is that I'm hurting right now. I'm in that situation right now. It's not gonna last unless I let it happen. It's up to me. So do I want to stay like this? forever and be that pitiful person that got like got cheated on uh still her business and being lied to and destroying all that stuff or am i gonna be with someone that's taking that story and making something out of it i always believe that nothing happened for nothing there's always a reason for everything to happen i was like okay which lesson can i get out of this I learned how to organize events. Okay, what is my my passion? I'm passionate about dance. What else? Self development. Okay, so maybe I can create an event in self development. So basically, it's by having something to look forward, because this is what happened when you lose everything. You lose everything. You have nothing to look forward. So the the future looks dark. Looks black there's nothing there is emptiness you feel like there's there's nothing and there will be nothing but it's by going deep inside of you and thinking like what can i do with what i have and who i am and the knowledge i have in my brain what can i do with that and that's why i start to create some conference invite some speaking guests and i i start my coaching career and since I was not good at selling, like a lot of people, I hated sales. Like I was like, yuck, those people are liars, they manipulate people, they're like, I didn't like sales at all. So I was like, okay, if I want to earn a living being a coach, I need to learn how to sell. So I went into sales coach, uh, I went to sales uh, learning online course, and I started searching for a job as a salesperson. I'm not totally, I, I like, I'm, I'm a teacher. I have a master degree in education, has nothing to do with sales. But I discovered sales, I trained myself at sales and I loved it. And then I was like, okay, I need to learn online marketing. So I went and I started learning online marketing. So it's to find, find a reason to live find a new purpose, and and then you look, what are the resources that will help me to get there? What can I do? What are my weakness 
or my challenges that I need to work on so I can reach there. So I learned all about online marketing. I learned, I learned all about the sales and then I put them into practice and I got results. So I keep persevering in that field. And I was like, I, I don't see myself going back to teaching regular classroom. I just cannot. I It doesn't align with my values. And I know that I'm going to be sad inside of me if I do that for the rest of my life. So I need to go back to that and think, why am I doing what I'm doing? I want to help as many people as I can. So I'm thinking about all the people I can help and are suffering right now. And I'm thinking, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because being good in sales means I'm going to be able to convince that person that I can help her or him. And this way, by being good at sales, I can actually help that person. If I was not good at selling, I would not be able to help that person. So those are the reasons why I got to love sales. And then I got to love marketing, things that I totally hated before. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the best way to, um, to, first of all, learn things is to live through something. And the best way to teach it is... Uh, from learned experience exactly right? and yeah. that seems to me um that the best teachers are the ones that have lived through something and they know what they're talking about so yeah. who are some of your biggest teachers kathy um obviously the classic tony robbins i think this guy <laughs> <laughs> is really well known uh jim ron which is a mentor of uh, tony robbins is also someone i like a lot i have some french mentor uh because i'm french canadian i also have um i have this lady she's uh, a young lady she's just turned 30. Uh, her name is Alexandra Villaruel Abrego. <laughs> it's a long, long name. She does. Uh, she talks a lot about feminine energy and the law of attraction and all that stuff. And she's a beautiful young lady, and she speaks in Spanish, English, and French. So she's really inspiring. And um, I have uh, James McNeil, that is one of my mentors, and I know is one of yours too. Les Brown, uh, Brian Tracy, uh, Napoleon, Napoleon Hill, all those people are the people that I discover uh, through my self development journey. And I have, I put up in two places a special routine that helped me to stay always in that vibrant energy, in that good vibration. and every morning i get up and i i first of all i listen to affirmation that are written out loud by myself so it's my mm -hmm. voice that i'm listening to and this is made with binaural beat i don't know if you know about binaural beat. no explain that please so binaural beats is basically you know in your brain you have waves vibration right so you, the wave of like the speed of what your brain is working at is either high when you're awake or really low if you're in meditation or sleeping and stuff like that. So they call alpha, theta, delta, all those yes. of yes. waves. Yes. Yes. So the deep meditation waves is really low. And when you wake up in the morning, you're more into that deep meditative state that have make you in a state of unconsciousness meaning that you have access to your unconscious so that's the best time you can actually do affirmation because it's getting right imprint into your subconscious and not in only on your conscious and to reach a meditative like the meditation state of mind it's by meditation and if you're not really good at it it can be really hard like i'm hyperactive it's really hard for me to sit down and, and and not having like the answer spinning in my head right so with binaural beats what it does is like in you have to use headphones and it's putting some beats some sounds that calibrate with your brain and reproduce and your brain is gonna sync after 10 15 minutes your brain start to sync 
with the, the song that you've been played in your ear. So within 10 to 15 minutes, you can get and be in the med meditation state of mind without having to be good at meditation. So you can just listen to that tape and it's gonna change the way the brain wave is working. And then you can actually get into the meditation state of mind, calm down yourself and have all those affirmations being reinforced and being imprinted into your subconscious. Mm -hmm. And this is also a really good tool if you're really, really stressed and you need to release stress and feel better and, and your brain is going on and on and on, it's mechanical. It's not you that control it. It's a mechanic brain that's being motivated in your brain. So it works and it's free and it's not dangerous. Because it's just bring you back to another state of consciousness. So it is it is one of the most efficient tool that I found for me that's hyperactive, overthinker, and is always like, can I stop? This is wonderful. So I start with that. So, so with Kathy, what are, what are a couple of those affirmations? Um, I am good enough. This is, I think the biggest one for 90% of the people yeah. in the world. I yeah. am enough. I am intelligent. I am capable of doing this. I am courageous. I am disciplined. I finished what I started. So those mm. are all affirmations that help me to accomplish my work because I work alone. There is no boss over my head telling me deadlines and this and this and that. So this is what helped me to repeat that in my head so when i'm trying to procrastinate it's so ingrained in my head that i hear my own voice being doing that affirmation i finished what i started okay kathy let's do it <laughs> so it's like having instead of having like always your two like a bad voice and a good voice over your shoulder it's like by doing affirmation you have the good voice being so big and so dominant because you train that big voice. If you train your negative voice and you give power to your negative voice and every time the negative voice is talking to you, you listening to it and you, you know, you go deep in, into that negative spiral, you're making that stronger. If you don't pay attention to your bad voice and you train your big voice to be stronger, then when you're alone and you have all those two voice talking, the bit that like the good one is like much stronger. And now it can go over and shut down the bad voice, right? So I do that. And I do also uh, listen to motivational speech every morning. So I pick one and I listen to it. Even my alarm clock is reminding me why I have to get up. So I register myself. And in the morning when it's ringing, it's my own voice reminding me why I need to get out of bed. So it's it's all like little reminder like this that's building the big positive voice to shut down the small one, the negative one. Because when, when you're under depression and when you're going through bad things, that's all the negative that's coming back and repeating the same thing is all on repeat, you know? So you have to put the other one on repeat. <laughs> you know so once you put the other one on repeat it's much easier to control your thought if you control oh, your brain you control everything oh so good uh, i always i always hear about affirmation and i'm a big believer in affirmation but it wasn't always like this and it it took a while because uh, you know you have you have those self beliefs you're like ah that's just all nonsense that doesn't work that sort of stuff doesn't work right and so what what is it you're just lying to yourself that's that's the way i used to think but it's so true that whatever you tell your mind it believes it yeah so you might as well tell your mind uh, good positivity so that you it can believe it exactly exactly and you will be surprised by the results and even myself um i had like issue with money with all that story that happened and i i i, I didn't know 
I didn't believe that I could earn a lot of money, especially as a teacher. I was like, oh, this is not a good earning in Quebec. It's not really well paid. And this is my life and it's nev never going to be different. But uh, with all those affirmation and, 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 and thinking, it did, it did change. So, so now my way of thinking is much different. I've been earning like three times the amount of money I was making as a teacher just because I believe it. And it was not possible before. I didn't believe I couldn't make that much money. So it's it's really interesting to see like how by controlling your brain, you can actually control the income and the outcome of what's going on in your life. You're you're uh, you are like what's what's in your life right now, you are the creator of that. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like it, don't try to change the outside. You have to change the inside. That's where you also yes. <laughs> yes. Well, it's so easy for me today to say this, right, Kathy? Like, I can say it now. But yeah. if you asked me a few years ago, this would not have been my answer to this because I would have blamed this and that and everything in the world for the way my life was uh, panning out. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's, such a, it's such a realization. Uh, when yeah. you get to that moment when you say, oh, no, like I'm 100 percent responsible for yeah. the way my life is playing at this moment. Exactly. Exactly. And you have always a choice to keep going this way or make a shift. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a big shift. You can just start with one thing and it can yeah. make a huge difference because just change the angle of a line that's going flat and then you give it just a little five percent incline and i if you go with that five percent incline at the end of the day you have a huge difference in between those lines you know it just started with one little thing and it remind me um remind me when i was uh i had another career before becoming a teacher <laughs> <laughs> I'm really special. I did. Um, I used to be a circus acrobat, and uh, when I was a circus acrobat, I was training also to become a cop. And in Quebec, it's it's a long training. It's a three years degree before being able to reach a police academy. So even before being able to enter the police training, you need three years of school year, and during those school we have to learn uh, martial arts. So I was training as a an acrobat and I was super flexible, I was strong, I, I was tolerant to pain and all that. So when I was fighting against guys, I was, I was really good at, because of all the training. I was training like the level of Olympic athletes to be in a circus. So one day I, I beat up a guy, he didn't like it. So the course after he crossed the dojo and put himself right in front of me and he said, I'm sorry for the bad word, but he said, I'm going to you off. And next thing you know, I was on my back, the shoulder totally popped out, ligaments ripped and it was over. I couldn't touch my, my trapeze ever after again. I was over for my, my circus career and it was over for my police career. All that because the guy couldn't handle being beat up by a woman. So you could imagine, I could have blamed that guy for the rest of my life and being like pitiful and say like, I lost my career as an acrobat. I lost my career as a police officer. I, I all because of that guy. I hate men's, men's are jerk, men's are this, men. Are, I could have go on like this and it will be justified. People would be like, yeah, poor you, you know, like you lost everything because of that guy. And, and, and get into that, into that pitiful mind. But instead I say, okay, I, I have a broken shoulder, I have fucked up knee, I cannot do much, what can I do? And I, I start, I was like, okay, I can, I can go in, uh, I, I moved to Niagara Falls to meet, uh, to, to live with my, my boyfriend at the time, and I started a French immersion daycare. Why not? I'm good with that. <laughs> I love kids. I love that. That's so good. <laughs> so, that's what I did. I didn't know how to start a school, a preschool. So I, I, I found a resource. I'm, I copy and I paste. I, I copy, modify it, and I paste. And this is what I've been doing all my life. So to come back from that situation, 
like I, I was really destroyed. You could imagine I was doing trapeze mm -hmm. for years. I was, I was working out training 15 hours a week for that. I was not going out. I was managing everything, my food and everything. So I can at a peak as a circus acrobat. And one day, boom, lost everything, put on weight, couldn't work out, couldn't train. I, I didn't have friends because I didn't have time for friends. So it was my whole life was collapsing again. So it, it is all about, okay, are you going to be that girl whining and crying? And, or are you going to go to physiotherapy, rebuild your shoulder? I had to relearn twice how to use my arm. You could imagine it's my right arm. And I, I, I was stuck two operation. It was my arm was stuck in that position for two months and a half without being able to move it or do anything with it. So I have to relearn to use my old arm twice. And I was like, okay, so it's either I do that or I'm whining and crying for the rest of my life. I only have one life. I should take the most out of it, right? I cannot give up like this. It doesn't make Amazing. sense. Amazing. Okay, so that reminds me of something. Um, you know, uh, Jennifer Woodbeck, she's another guru of uh, James McNeil's um, yeah. uh, students. She, this is what she said the other day, and uh, that reminded me of that. She said, are you going to make this the story of your life, or are you going to make this a part of your story? That's a really good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. yeah, and that's what you just said exactly like that because so many people go through challenges in life and um, the ones that get up and they change, they change with the times, they are flexible, they are adaptable and they pick up and they move on. They make that a part of their journey, not the whole journey. And that's a big difference between people. It is. It is. I, I was hearing a friend of mine. She's like, my husband left me. Oh, I'm sorry. When was that? 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, and you never met anyone since then? No, men are all, all jerks and this and that. I was like, okay, she's still living in her story. She's okay, still yeah. living in it. And that person that said that did so much damage, she letting that person making more damage into her mm -hmm. life, not letting you go, mm -hmm. you know? And it's, it's hard for, I, I know it's hard, you know, a parent losing a child, uh, when you lose your spouse, when, you know, you, you become ill with something um, serious that will affect you for the rest of your life. These are all challenges uh, in our lives and every single person lives with their own challenges. But um, like you said, that we all have the one life. Yeah. Exactly. And what will you do? Yes. So this happened. Yes, this so happened. So what? And, and and James says, and now what? Exactly. Exactly. You have to stop in the living in the past. You have to to be present and not focus too much on the future in the sense that it might be making you anxious because you don't know what the future is made of, right? Yeah. So for me, it was also to learn how to live in a moment, on a present moment. And in a present moment, there is no past and there is no future. There is just you and the life you have. And that's why I dive right into dance. And that's what was lifting up my spirit. And that was what uh, the shift that I did from being a circus acrobat, I became a dancer. So I found a new way. I found something else and I love dancing just as much as I used to love circus, right? So it is up to you to decide how you're going to turn around what's going on. I cannot hang myself by my shoulder anymore, but I can surely dance. So it is, is it is always, it's always up to you. And anyone that is like in a bad relationship, for example, um, my parents, they were like, okay, Kathy, you know, like maybe it's time to have a kid and, and set it on and all that. It was like, you know what? I know this guy is not the right person. I can have a kid with that person. And I'm going to be miserable like this person and this person and this person because they got married and they got 
uh, they had a child with that person just because it was time. And now they're miserable for the rest of the life. And if you ask them, they will be like, well, I don't want to say I don't like my kids, but I will rather not having them with that guy or having that situation. And I knew it before having my kids with that person. <laughs> and my question is, why you didn't do it? So, well, it was too hard. I wasn't ready to go through this. So instead of going through a hard time for a short period of time, a really, really hard time for a short period of time, and go through that divorce, separation, and all that darkness, and then at the end of the day, uh, or the process, then you recover and then you're happier than you've ever been before. Or you drag that pain for the rest of your life. And that's where I'm saying, not for me, not for me. So um, what I'm hearing is um, living in mediocrity because you have to, because it's easier, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easier choice. Yes, it's, it's not, yes, it's in your comfort zone. It's not, it's not the right solution. Yeah. Instead, having the resilience and the courage. Okay. First of all, the determination. Yes. That I'm going to change my life around. Then the courage. Yes. To face the challenges that is going to have because it will have its challenges, and the resilience to the face time. the music. <laughs> yes. Right. So we have the perfect example right now with the COVID. Like we have to shut down the economy so we can save the population from that virus. So we have to go through a dark period where people are losing job. They cannot see their family. Kids are not going home to school. It's held in the house because a husband and wife are not used to be together for that long or that you know, without any personal space and then they're, they're fighting and all that. But it is necessary to go through that so we can survive after and having a better life. We all in this right now. So we all understand we have to suffer for a period of time, but it's not going to be forever. It's, it's going to stop eventually and it's going to be better after. That's what we have to think. I always think about the season. Like right now, I'm winter. It's winter. Screw this. I'm going to go through that. I know spring is coming. It will come. It always come. It's always, there's always something coming better for you. But to be able to reach that, you have to let go what's behind because you cannot hold new things in your hand if you're full of crap from the past, right? So you need to free yourself from what happened and accept that the, ch the situation changed and it's never going to be the same. And then hold it, brace yourself and go through this. Yes, you're going to be in the, the corner, like sucking your thumb, rolling into a balls and wanting to, to go back to where it was before. But if you just hold on a little longer, you're going to make it. Um, I hear a lot of this, the good old days, the good old days. I think that a lot of people are now realizing how good we had it before and they're talking about the good old days. Whereas when we were in the good old days, they were still talking about the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's just human nature not to be happy where, with where we are in life. And um, so, so one of the things that I think helps a lot is um, developing a gratitude attitude. Exactly. For, what's your take on that? Because I'm big on gratitude. Oh, so I'm huge. What is what is your take on this? That that is one exercise I do actually every night before going to bed, uh, because when you're gratitude, you cannot be in fear and in lack. So it is really powerful exercise. And when I was in India. That was the most powerful moment of gratitude I had over there. I learned gratitude 10 times, 10,000 times. Uh, to be able to unlock my door and get into my apartment building, uh, it was uh, three, three, um, three apartments. 
I have to walk over a man that was living in my staircase. Mm. He was living there mm -hmm. with his wife and his kid. He was living on the street and the steps was his bed. So every day that I had to pass through my door, I remember I have a house. So even if I had to sleep on the on the floor for two weeks with no, no mattress or anything like that, like I did with no AC, no mattress, nothing, I was grateful that I had the place to sleep. And then when I was ordering food, I always have a little extra so I can give to the men because you have nothing. So mm -hmm. every time I had a meal, I was grateful to be able to order a meal because I remember that that guy didn't have a meal. So every food I was eating and tasting tastes wonderful because I knew that guy didn't have anything. So every time and and got one time where uh, it was really dry in Chennai and uh, I didn't know how it works with the, the water pumps system over there. And I forgot to open my pump, my water pump and 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 the the it was so dry that even if i opened my water pump there was no water so i had to go buy water so i can wash myself and there was no water anywhere like people were fighting to get their jar of water fill up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i was on the street with my my water jug and i finally got to get water and i was like this is so freaking precious that bucket of water took me three hours to have and i don't know if i'm going to be able and when i'm going to be able to have water again so for me like every every like piece of water i was taking to wash myself and stuff i was really careful mm -hmm. and here you open the top and it's like running and you go you there it is there we go there it is i know so uh it's amazing the little things that we can take for granted. And you're so right. We walk into the bathroom and you open the tap water, hot water, cold water, mix it up, get the best. And we let it run yeah. as we brushing our teeth. And, and sometimes I have to remind myself this water need not to be running like this while you're brushing your teeth. Exactly. That it's, uh, be, it's because we we take it for granted yeah and so yes the little things like this having running water is just such a wonderful wonderful oh my god <laughs> it's, it's a it's a blessing you could imagine like every time i wanted to flush i was like no not my precious water i'm gonna flush poo poo with that like i don't know <laughs> But I, like I couldn't leave the toilet like this, you know. Like it's how like how big this can become, you know. It's like how grateful you are. Even with my water was like I was using to flush. I was like, oh, thank you, God, I have some water to flush that, you know. But at the same time, I was like, thank God, no, I don't want to waste that water and flushing that. I needed to wash myself. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh, you're so right. You're so right. And so, like, let's remind people of the things that they can be grateful for right now. I, so I got to tell you, I have um, I do this thing called gratitude beat every night at 11 p.m. So for a few minutes, just like 10 or 12 minutes. And it's on it's live on Facebook um, where I, I do a meditation and then I look back at the day and I try to pull three things from my day that I'm grateful for. And I encourage people to do that with me. Um, so let's remind people of what they can be grateful for right now. Even during this whole um, uh, life-changing situation that we're going through, Kathy, what do you think? Oh, there's so many things, Bella. Like if, if I'm just thinking about what we have here compared to India in a condition I've been living in, is like we have water, we have hot water, we have toilet that flush with the toilet seat, we have soap to wash our hands, we have clean hair. Not everyone have clean air. And I had like a uh, breathing problem in India because it's so polluted. Uh, you have a bed to sleep in and it's a comfy bed i've been sleeping in what they call over there cut and it's yeah. like <laughs> i know what those are <laughs> sorry that's, 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have your stencil, you have plates, you have food. It might not be the best food right now. It might be not the steak you wish having, but you still have food, you know? Uh, you have diversity of food. You're not stuck only with rice because right now in India, what they're giving them is rice, plain rice. That's all they're giving to the population right now. We have a government that's behind us, helping us, protecting us, doing everything they can so we can be safe. We have a service of police officer that are not corrupted, which is huge. So you're not afraid if you go on the street to be beat up by uh, a stick like they do in India or ask you a huge amount of money just because. Uh, we're, we have family. We have internet. We can communicate with a whole bunch of people. We have access to everything we could learn and want in the universe is online. You can be grateful for that. You, you will never run out of knowledge, you know? And anything you want to learn in life, you can. And it's only up to you. So you have to be grateful for that. You have to be grateful that you can speak. You're not sick. You have, uh, you have hair, some people losing their hair because they have chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. You have, like, there's so many things. I can go on. <laughs> I tell you. Uh, no, you're so you're so right. And it, it, it takes it takes a little bit of effort sometimes if you're not used to this whole gratitude attitude. But once you start and you start seeing everything in around the, around you that um, that oh my gosh, if it wasn't there, your life would not be the same. And I I I totally yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did we live without these before? <laughs> like, seriously, and all of us has want, you know. Yeah. There, like, if you don't feel good, how many people do you have at the other side of this that would be willing to hear you and talk with you and give you some love? Mm -hmm. Like, you can be grateful. You can go on Facebook and say, "Guys, I need some prayers right now. I'm not feeling good. Please." And you're going to have a whole bunch of people commenting and sending you love. Yeah. Aren't so you? True. It's so, so good. So true. So true. Um, Kathy, I could talk to you forever. <laughs> you're, you're such you're a delightful person with so much positivity. And I've learned so much from you today. But we have been talking for over an hour now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm going to let you go. And I hope that you come back here again. Uh, for another chat very soon. Uh, mm -hmm. I just loved having you here, and your story is amazing. And your so your your life is so filled with um uh, with not only just wonderful experiences, but a lot of challenges and a lot of um, learning. Um, yeah. And I, I personally, I'm very blessed to have gotten to know you a little bit better. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My pleasure. Anytime you want me back will be my pleasure. I love to talk. I love to share my knowledge. And if I went through all that crap, at least if it can serve someone else and help that person to get out of theirs, I'm here. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. I wish you the best um, birthday and <laughs> a happy Easter weekend. And again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, everybody who, um, who's been watching and is going to watch later. Uh, reach out, comment, um, questions if you have anything. I'm sure um, Kathy will reach out too. And with that, I'm going to let you go. Have a safe day, everybody. Uh, thank Don't you again. Hot chocolate. <laughs> Don't drink too much hot chocolate. No, <laughs> Did you say? No, don't eat too much chocolate. It's oh, don't eat too much chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> or do. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> Everything in moderation, right? <laughs> but you know what's good is like this year, we're not really celebrating in family with chocolate and stuff, right? So no. all you can do is wait for the sales on chocolate after Easter and then. <laughs> You can get the good stuff. <laughs> so thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. This is Della's voice, hoping to spark your soul. See you soon. Thank you, Della. Bye. Thank you, Kathy. Bye-bye.